So when a patient first presents with a diagnosis of CLL, um, I think obviously once they've established that diagnosis, the most important things are really what are their blood counts, how, are, how is their physical exam, do they have big and bulky lymph, lymph nodes or big and bulky organomegaly, their spleen and their liver. When we talk about sophisticated tests, um, we talk about um, cytogenetics or FISH, um, their molecular mutational status, and there's always a question about whether or not these tests need to be done as soon as a patient is diagnosed or whether this can appropriately be done prior to them initiating therapy. Now obviously coming from uh, an academic institution I'm a little spoiled because we do this testing baseline. However remember these tests do cost money and some of the peripheral blood testing for these patients can cost them potentially thousands of dollars. So I think when you have these discussions with your patients if it doesn't change their current management i.e. they're just going to be monitored because their blood counts are normal, they have no bulky disease, as long as the patient is comfortable with that, I think that's not unreasonable and, and, and obviously practical. Um, clearly before anybody initiates any therapy for CLL, these tests do need to be done because I think there have been much data, um, not just at this meeting, but in previous meetings highlighting the importance of some of this testing because therapy selections really need to be guided by the testing results. So when we talk about the cytogenetics or FISH, if a patient has a P53 or a 17P deletion, patient should be steered away from chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, unless it's chemoimmunotherapy that's on a clinical trial that combines it with a novel agent. Because they need a novel agent. I think there is a plethora of data suggesting that these patients need a novel agent such as a brutinib or venetoclax based therapy. Um, if they have, uh, if their molecular testing reveals they're unmutated, I think there's very good data from MD Anderson and others showing that patients who are unmutated do, le do less well also with chemoimmunotherapy. And so these kinds of tests you do need to perform prior to somebody initiates uh, therapy for their disease. And so I think that's an important question for the patients to ask their doctors. Um, in addition, people always ask about CAT scans. Imaging is more routinely done than I'd like uh, than their test than being actually than having fish or their molecular testing done. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a CAT scan, but if it doesn't change your management, um, then doing one routinely is probably not necessary. I think if somebody has big and bulky lymphadenopathy on the outside on exam and you're concerned that they might, because of that, you're concerned that they may have a, a large bulky abdominal retroperitoneal mass, then it's not, unregional, not unreasonable to CAT scan them at baseline. Otherwise, I do tend to get one prior to initiating therapy. So again, that prior to starting therapy because depending upon what agent you're going to give them, they may have a higher risk of tumor lysis and you want to know what their baseline, what their lymph nodes or their organ involvement, how big they are. Um, so I think that those are probably the basic testing that should be done. Um, clearly, as we get more sophisticated, there'll be more molecular testing that will come avail. Although right now, given that uh, we're not necessarily guiding therapy just there yet, so we could talk about NOTCH and other mutations um, that are emerging, that is not standard of care just yet. Um, so I think at the, at the very least, patients need FISH cytogenetics and of course um, the molecular testing and a CAT scan, which is not unreasonable. But whether you do that at, at diagnosis or right before th starting therapy, I think is a little bit up for debate.